my name is Mike Matros. I'm the owner, inventor, and founder of Redline Gear Cleaning. We are a mobile on-site gear cleaning company. Today, we're gonna to be taking you through the entire process of what is involved in cleaning, inspecting, and putting firefighting gear back in service. One thing I wasn't really aware of when I took the job as a firefighter was the cancer problem that's plaguing the fire service. Over the last 20 years, 66% of all uh, firefighter line of duty deaths has been related to cancer. It's not if I get cancer, it's when I get cancer. That particular risk and exposure is something that we really want to try and mitigate. If the environment is toxic to the point where you have to wear your air pack, that's an exposure. Because if your lungs cannot handle the exposure, your gear is absorbing all those exposures into it, and that needs to be cleaned and washed. So the mobile extraction unit is actually a patented design that allows the truck to come directly to the fire station to be a mobile laundry facility that specializes in cleaning firefighting gear. It contains our water, our electric, big commercial extractors, dryers, equipment to clean helmets and air packs, all specialized equipment needed to clean firefighting gear specifically. First step for us is to assess the firehouse. And what that means could be going locker to locker, looking at, at the gear, determining how exposed the gear is, determining what's in the guy's pockets, determining what gear needs to be cleaned. This helmet is what we like to call in the fire service, salty. This helmet is gross. It has seen a lot of smoke. It has seen a lot of contaminants. A little older guys tend to call their gear salty gear as a badge of honor. And they look at this gear as something that shows experience and shows they went to a very hot, very involved fire and they got really dirty. That is something that at Redline, we're really trying to change that culture. The badge of honor they're wearing is causing cancer to these guys. We're trying to tell them that clean is the new salty. This is our ultrasonic machine. So as you can see, we're loading the helmets in and this is what has often been referred to as our deep fryer for helmets. We use a degreaser, we also use a sanitizer in here that's gonna clean, disinfect, and sanitize your helmet to the point where it comes out. We just have to wipe it down. The helmet is probably the most important part to a firefighter in terms of his gear. Redline's all firefighter owned, firefighter operated. So some people like to say we washed away all their experience. I like to think we added a few years of life to there. We take a lot of time washing and cleaning helmets. Now, that's probably the most controversial thing we do as a company because some people believe that helmet should never be touched. This gear is particularly very dirty, uh, really needs a good deep cleaning from both the helmet hood, jacket pants, liners, all the gear really needs a good heavy deep cleaning because this gear it has seen a lot of exposure. Once we've determined what gear needs to be cleaned, that gear has to be inspected. It has to be separated between the outer shells and the inner liners, completely separated, keeping those wash cycles completely different so we don't have cross-contamination between the cleaning. But while we're doing this, we're inspecting the gear. We're looking for any rips, we're looking for burn marks, we're looking for holes in the gear, we're looking for anything that can get a firefighter hurt. Here we have taken the inner liner, put it on our hydrostatic testing machine. This is a process that would test a moisture barrier of a firefighter suit to make sure that there's no leaks or any problems with the moisture barrier to make sure that water isn't gonna to get to a firefighter's skin and cause steam burns. The next step would be to hand clean the gear. We use a product called Decon 7 that we scrub gear to the point where we get most of the contaminants off the gear initially. This is an important part for us as part of the process to get rid of any bulk contaminants that would be on that gear, whether it be insulation or anything else they might run into in the field. A firefighter's gear needs to be cleaned after every exposure. As you can see, it gets pretty nasty. After the inspection, the inner liners are then separated out. They're turned inside out, so this way we're washing the part that is against your skin first. Those would then go into our commercial extractor and be washed through our five cycle program. We use cold water for washing gear. This not only helps the cleaning process, but at the same time, it keeps the colors and stuff in the fabric true. We can fit six sets of firefighting gear into these machines because they're so large. That's 12 pieces of gear going into each extractor. After both the inner shells and the outer uh, shells are cleaned through our extractor, they then go into their respective dryers. We're able to dry both the liners and outer shells in one hour. We 
we lay out the boots that have to get hand scrubbed and we are also fogging them, spraying them with a disinfectant that's going to neutralize, it's going to kill, it's going to disinfect anything those boots might have come in contact with. One of the key elements to a firefighter gear is the hood they wear underneath their helmet and it goes through. That protects their ears, that protects their helmet. People forget to even clean these. Anything that's going to be exposed and touched to your skin should be washed the same way as if you would the liners that are next to your skin. The water that comes off this extractor is like a sludge, like a mud. So anybody who believes the cancer problem in fire service isn't real, I encourage you to see the wastewater that comes off this gear. It is nasty, it is black, it is like mud. So at the end of every job, it's important for us to show what the wastewater and what the situation is like in terms of what's coming off the gear. This is the stuff that's coming off your gear. This is the stuff we just cleaned just now that has loaded with soot, loaded with chemicals, loaded with stuff that's causing cancer to these guys. And we make it a point to show these filters to all of our customers, to all the firefighters, to know just how dirty their gear was and how important cleaning their gear is. Our filtration process is so in-depth that it allows us to take really dirty water, filter it, run it through a number of filters, run it through a full process that makes that water completely clean, reusable, prevents us from putting toxic products back into the environment and makes it a sustainable solution that we can keep using and be very environmental safe after we clean very toxic gear. Today, the fire service is made up of a lot of chemicals. In the form of combustion at a fire, every single room is now has plastics, has particle board, has different materials that are burning. It's causing the fires to burn hotter, to burn more violently, and the smoke is thick, nasty black smoke. So while the fire service has been around for years, the makeup and the exposures of the fire service are very different nowadays. Our final product is taking all 10 pieces of gear that was cleaned, putting it back together, putting it in a gear bag, ready to go. Boots are on bottom, pants, jacket, hoods and gloves tucked in the side, helmet on the top as one complete package, ready to go. We can't control the dangers of the job, but we can control the exposure rate of what these guys are exposed to from a cancer causing substance that's really killing this fire service. I don't need to see soot and dust all over a guy's helmet and gear to know he knows how to do his job. I want to see a guy who's clean, got his uniform in shape, everything is properly ready to go. He's able to perform his job to the best of his ability. That's a salty firefighter.